What's going on YouTube? It's crazy for coins here. And in today's video topic, we're going to be doing gold or silver. Now, the reason why I'm doing this topic is because there's been a discussion um, for the longest time for different various people about whether or not silver is better than gold, gold is better than silver. So I'm just going to give you my take based on the conclusions that I've come to for myself. And depending on your um, finances or whatever or not, um, I would just basically, this is how I, this is how I would buy um, based on finances or whatever. So the number one metric I'm going to look at is portability, okay? This is almost one ounce of gold. It's 0.9675 ounces of gold. So this coin is probably, you go to buy this on eBay, maybe $1,450, $1,400, or even JM Bullion or whatever um, for 63 Okay, guys, this... Boom. Okay, if, if you're in an emergency situation where you gotta go or you gotta move, or even like you know, you're you're packing up and you need to go somewhere. Right in my pocket, guys. Very simple. This is a hundred ounce bar, which is probably about sixteen hundred dollars right now if you were to go pick this up, okay? This, try to put this thing in your pocket. Look at that. Okay, I could fit in my pocket. Yeah, great. But it's like I got to keep pulling my pants up. It's not, and it's just so bulky. It's so heavy. Um, so you could put, you know, imagine instead of putting this, imagine this being a 100-ounce gold bar, okay? You could literally put, this this would be like a down payment on a house that you could put in your pocket. So gold, hands down, wins that category. Now, the second category would be affordability. Now, I know what you're thinking. Silver is more affordable than gold, and you would be right. But you'd also be wrong because it depends on the person. If the person has $2,000, $3,000 a month that they want to spend on gold, then, or gold or silver, excuse me. If a person has two, dollars $3,000 that they want to spend on gold or silver, then I would recommend gold. And the reason why I would recommend gold is because if you buy a one ounce gold coin, um, online, you know, on eBay, even without the deals, guys, even without 15% off on eBay, you can get gold, okay? You could get one ounce Crew Grand, one ounce Maple Leaf, one ounce um, whatever it may be. Atmix usually has special prices and whatnot, and you could get it at or below spot. You can't do that with silver. You cannot do that with silver. So, as far as affordability goes, premium-wise, you'd be better off with gold. Now, if your budget is $100 a month, let's, you know, for whatever the reason may be, or less than $100 um, a month, then you'd be better off with silver. And the reason why I'd say you'd be better off with silver is because... First of all, if you try to buy a tenth of an ounce gold coin, okay, which is around, it's around 140, 140 plus dollar. You're paying 100 plus dollars over spot if you were to get 10 of them. So you're paying 100 plus dollars over spot versus if you buy generic silver, maybe junk silver, you're paying like $1.25 over. So it's much more affordable um, and it makes more sense to buy the silver in that case over the gold. Now, 
Um, so it kind of it, it's kind of a split between um, on on the uh, affordability category. Now, another thing to look for, um, and that gets into the with the affordability, is that silver is much more affordable to the masses than gold. Okay, so if you have, you take your average Joe Schmo on the street, assuming that you believe that, you know, we go, if we go into a major depression where gold and silver actually maybe go, we, we go back to gold and silver being money um, instead of the currency system that we have today, then more people can afford silver. So in this case, Silver is better than gold because people will be buying silver because they can afford silver over gold. Therefore, the demand for silver will be much more than the demand for gold. So therefore, silver in this case is better than gold. Now, historically speaking, if you look historically, guys, um, at the, at the charts, if you've seen my previous videos, by far, gold has done much better than silver. Um, and, and you could just see, you could just see in the charts, guys, just, just go to the SLV, the GLD, um, look at the charts, and you could see that over the long term, gold does better. Um, it's almost like I would call it the tortoise and the hare. Silver spikes more. Silver has much more, um, it has bigger moves and it has parabolic moves where gold doesn't. Okay, but when silver has the parabolic moves, when silver made its, its high to almost $50 an ounce, okay, where did it go all the way down to? It went down to, what, 13 and change an ounce as low as? So... You're talking a 70, 70 plus percent or whatever it is decline in the price where gold, gold currently is trading 1280. So it's only down from the high about 600 or so. But if you look at the overall chart, guys, from where gold was to where silver was, around the financial crisis gold as silver is pretty much trading there gold still has to go down another four hundred dollars so charting wise it's almost like silver runs better but like the hair it takes a nap only to wake up and find the tortoise the passing so in that respect gold is better than silver um so now what are we to make of all this? And please, in the comment section below, if you want to add to it, comment to it, that's fine. That's cool. Um, so, bottom line, I feel, is that overall, have a good mix of gold and silver. Don't just totally favor one or totally favor the other. Um, depending on what your goals are, depending on what your finances are, overall, I personally feel that you should have um, a one-to-one -one gold to silver ratio, meaning that dollar-wise, dollar if you have $1,000 in gold, have $1,000 in silver. Right now, I favor gold over silver. I buy more gold than silver. But if silver drops to 10 to 12 an ounce, where I feel eventually that it will, then I will buy a lot more silver than I will buy gold. And in time, this will balance out. So then, okay, now I have more, um, I concentrate much more on gold and silver. But then in the future, if it goes down, I'll concentrate, concentrate much more on silver. Therefore, I'll be top heavy gold now. But in the future, if silver pulls back to where I want it to go, then I will dramatically increase my silver purchases. So it's more of a one to one ratio, it's more balanced. Um, as far as platinum goes, Again, this video is mainly for gold and silver. I'm mostly doing platinum videos, so I, I wanted to do you know, take a little break from the platinum and go to gold and silver. Um, but 
as far as platinum goes, guys, platinum is like the fringe precious metal. Um, I feel it should be in your portfolio, you know, if you feel that there's significant upside, but it's not a feature presentation. It's almost like you have a stock portfolio of five stocks and you want to dabble like, you know, you, you might have ConocoPhillips, you might have ExxonMobil, you might have um, Merck, Pfizer, you know, the big Dow blue chip stocks, you know, because maybe you feel safe. But maybe you want that speculative position on the side. Maybe you feel marijuana, you know, the weed stocks like Chrono, um, Kronos, Tilray, um, Canopy Growth Corporation. We'll just say you've done your research, you've done your homework, you feel like, you know, they, they could have the potential to explode. It's a speculative thing, okay? It could have a huge, you could have a huge giant return on it, or you, it could go bust, um, it's not something you want to make a feature presentation. Like you want, you want to have a little speculative position. That's fine. But you know, if you have a 10,000 for me, for instance, if you have a $10,000 portfolio, I would not make platinum more than $2,000 of it. I would not make, and, and the rest of the $8,000 I would make towards gold and silver. Um, and simply because platinum, again, is much more speculative. It has to do with the catalytic converters, whether you feel we're moving more into electric cars and moving more away from catalytic converters, which use platinum. Um, but then you have the potential of the demand from the loss of platinum and catalytic converters potentially going into jewelry. Um, so it's, it's speculation. We don't know. Um, as far as that is concerned, but gold and silver are insurance policies. You know, if we, as stackers, we've done our research and we have, we feel that potentially in the future, in case there's an economic collapse, God forbid, I don't want an economic collapse, but God forbid there's an economic collapse, we have the that insurance. So that is my number one. Um, Concentration is the gold and silver. Platinum is the speculative position. Palladium, I don't dabble in. I think it's either appropriately priced or overvalued compared to platinum. So I'd rather concentrate on platinum. And rhodium, copper, whatever other metal, um, iridium, I don't dabble in any of that. Um, all right, guys. Hope you got something out of this video and have a nice day.